Well, this is an ADCOM GFA 545 Series 2. And it's kind of hard to tell because I have a mono microphone, but I do have some audio going into it right now, and I'm only getting sound out of the right channel. So if I disconnect the right channel input, all you hear is an unbalanced hum because there's no load, but I get nothing on the left channel whatsoever. So let's go ahead and check a couple of basic things first. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this thing. So with the power on, I'm just gonna go ahead and check across these fuses and see if I have any voltage drop. And I have 54 volts on that one, which is definitely bad. And I have 54 volts on that one as well. So both of those fuses are blown. Well, let's power this thing down. And go ahead and pull the board out of this thing. Let's just see what kind of voltage we have on the tops of these with the power off. And I've still got 78 volts and dropping. Let me try to put it in the low impedance mode. Now the low impedance mode on this model puts a 3000 ohm load across the input. So it's going to help discharge these main filter caps much quicker. Now this does have a separate power supply for each channel. So even though I'm discharging this channel, there's probably still going to be voltage over here on this channel. I know it's already discharged because of the load. I think 12 volts is okay to live with. Let's go ahead and pull the board out of this thing and take a look at it. Test the output transistors and see if we've got some shorts or what actually blew this thing up. Okay, well I know we definitely have two blown fuses. So I should definitely get a beep. So let's go ahead and check the output transistors. We'll do diode junction tests on the outputs and the driver and the bias temperature regulating transistor right here in the center. So we'll measure base to collector, and I should see a junction, and I do. Base to emitter, and I see a junction, and then collector emitter, I should not see a short, so that is good. Good, good, no short, good. Good, and no short. Same thing on this driver transistor. Good junction, good junction, no short. Now, we'll measure the PNP transistors. I'm reversing the leads. Good. All that tests perfectly fine. I was actually expecting to see a defective output transistor. Let's just go ahead and check from earth to collector to make sure we don't have any shorts. I don't think these would short out, but sometimes you'll get a short through the mica insulator. So the center tab is connected to the metal backing plate on the transistor. And I have had mica insulators fail. So if you measure from earth which is the heat sink ground to the center tab, which I just did, we get no shorts on any transistor, which is absolutely perfect. So could there be something else on the board shorted? Well, of course there could be. Let's just measure from positive to negative. And I do see a junction, which is good. I don't see a zero ohm load. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a couple fuses in this thing. I'll bring it up slowly on the variac and watch the current and see what happens. Okay, so here we go. I've got the power on and I've got the Variac turned on to minimum voltage. I do have audio going into the unit and I'm watching the Variac as I bring the voltage up slowly and I'm not seeing any abnormal draw whatsoever. Let's go ahead and turn up the volume. Well, it's working just great. Could it have just been a couple of blown fuses? They didn't really. 
So there's a close-up of the fuses, and as you can see, they're not violently blown, which means the whole inside of the fuse is not black. It looks like they were just stressed. In fact, the lower fuse is just barely open. You can definitely see where it did arc out inside, but typically, in the case of a dead short, this whole fuse would be black inside. That one's just a little bit worse. You can definitely see an arc mark on the inside of the glass, but it just reached its melting point and it opened. So, yeah. You can even see a little a ball of fuse rolling around on the inside of it there. It just might have been overdriven just on that one channel. Maybe they got a bad speaker, I'm not sure. At least the output transistors did hold up. Anyhow, that's it, the repair on the Adcom. Just replacing a couple fuses and doing some basic checks. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video, it really helps my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. That is the best way to contact me. Please be patient. I do have a full-time job and I do this in my spare time. Remember with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin and out of the e-waste facility. Once again, everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.